My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. You might have noticed that these last few days since the Feast of St. John the Evangelist on the 27th of December, our first reading in Mass has been taken from his first letter and so continues today and tomorrow also. So these few couple of days, the Church wants us to use a continuous reading from his first letter. And in today's first letter section, we read the following, and this is part of it. The love of the Father cannot be in any man who loves the world, because nothing the world has to offer, the sensual body, the lustful eye, pride in possessions, could ever come from the Father, but only from the world. And the world, with all it craves for, is coming to an end. But anyone who does the will of God remains forever. So we're going to pray with this passage instead of using the gospel, because it's nice to use St. John, since clearly the church is, is pointing out his first letter to us. What is St. John telling us in these readings, and again in today's reading? You, you could put it this way. John is telling us a Christian is not born for rubbish. Another way that this is put in, in Latin is at maiora natusum. I have been born for greater things. St. Paul, St. John says, you're not made for the world and all it craves for. John, you're a a beloved apostle, Lord, is the one who teaches. See what love the Father has for us, that he has called us sons of God, and so we are. John, perhaps because you, Lord, gave him to be Mary as her son, and she to be his mother in a unique way. Perhaps because of this, John really knew what it meant to be a child of God, what it meant to be called to live for higher things. And this is what you want us to pray about, Lord, in these days following your own birthday. It's a time to reflect on the great love that God has for us, that God gave us his only begotten Son, and so we meditate on this throughout these days of Christmas tide, that God gave you, Jesus, his only begotten Son, his greater treasure to be ours. And, and he did this, the Father did this, so that you and I could become children of God. This is called divine filiation, becoming an adoptive son or daughter of God a son and the son, as St. Augustine puts it. He also says, God was made man that man might be made God. So it's an amazing truth that we have to meditate on after Christmas. When we see you, Lord, in the crib, the only begotten Son of God, we realize that you are there so that in some way I could be there also, an infant God's child in the crib, infinitely loved by the Father. This is so important for us, to know how much we are loved by God. Again, St. Augustine, nobody loves more than the person who knows that he is loved. That's remarkable. Knowing how much God loves me will transform me. And it transforms me, it transforms me because I know I'm just not anybody. I'm somebody so special because I am a child of God. You might have heard of the wonderful saint from Africa, Josephine Bakita, who was canonized by St. John Paul II. She was born around the year 1869. She herself didn't know the precise date. She was born in, in Sudan. At the age of nine, she was kidnapped. It was so, tra- so traumatic for her that she even forgot her, her name. Akita was a name the slave traders gave her, the ones who kidnapped her. And they treated her very badly. 
and she was really very badly treated as a useless, worthless slave. And she was sold on from one slave owner to another, beaten. She ended up scarred, terribly scarred. And I suppose in some sense marked by that, thinking, well, I'm nothing. I'm just, I'm just something to be bought and sold by people in this way. And she finally was actually bought by somebody on behalf of the Italian consul of the time with a view to liberating her when they were fleeing from, uh, from the Sudan. And she was fleeing there. And when they'd returned to Italy, she was introduced to Christianity. And she came to know that she, above us all, there was a master who was not like the slave masters that she had known all her life. This was a completely different kind of master, the living God, the God of Jesus Christ. And as, as um, Pope Benedict put it, through this, she came to know that this Lord even knew her that he had created her, that he actually loved her. She too was loved and by none other than the Supreme Master. And she herself would say, I am definitively loved. Whatever happens to me, I am awaited by this love, love with a capital L. Through the knowledge of, of this love, she realized she was not a slave. She was a free child of God. So she's a woman who had a particular grace from God to realize what it meant to be a child of God, someone who was so valuable in God's eyes, so worthy. Because perhaps she had had that experience for so many years of being treated really like rubbish, St. Gregory, the Bishop of Nyssa in the 4th century, he writes about the same thing, and he puts it in these great words. He says, You are a poor thing in your own eyes, but I would teach you that in reality you are a great thing. Realize what you are. Consider your royal dignity. The heavens have not been made in God's image as you have, nor the moon, nor the sun, nor anything to be seen in creation. Behold, of all that exists, there is nothing that can contain your greatness. So these are words that St. Gregory is applying to you and to me. Though we consider ourselves, sometimes we say we have a poor image of ourselves because we see our weakness, or we see ourselves reflected in the eyes or the treatment or the behavior of others, who don't really think all that much of us. And we can start to believe that in some way and think, well, they are, they, they are really reflecting my lack of worth, their lack of, of, uh, of respect for me or their lack of love or consideration for me really must reflect the fact that I don't, I'm not very valuable. And so the Gregory warns us, don't think that. Consider your royal dignity. You are so valuable because you are a child of God. You've been, for, you've been born for greater things, not for the passing things of this earth, the world, as St. John says in the reading, with all that it craves for. All these things are passing. They're all coming to an end. We haven't been made for those things. We have been made only for eternal things, the eternal things of the Father who loves us, of the Son who became man at Christmas for us with the Holy Spirit that teaches us teaches us how much God loves us so let's finish up by turning to Our Lady asking her for an awareness an increased awareness over these days of Christmas tide an increased awareness of our dignity as children of God I give you thanks my God for the good resolutions affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.